Okay, we're going to go through all six graphs, and I don't know, it, it, I hope you guys just don't memorize six, the six graphs, you got to know how, how, they, how they come to be. Okay, let's look at a graph of y equals cosine x. What does that look like? One, two, three, four. Even. One, two, three, four. Even. And then one, negative one. Oh, negative one. So it looks like this, right? It keeps on going forever left and right. Yeah? yeah? Okay, and it's an even function. Yeah, even. Okay, now what if I were to ask you to graph the inverse of this? You switch the x's and y's. That's exactly what you do. You learned how to do this already. So on your y-axis, you probably want to label it with the pi's. And on the x-axis, you go 1 and negative 1, right? Because you can switch the x's and y's. So like, what are the coordinates of this point? 0, 1. Zero, 1. So if I switch it, you get 1, zero. One 0. This point is pi over 2, 0. So if you switch it, zero, pi you get over 0, two. pi over 2. And if you, if you just keep switching, the x and y coordinates, you get a graph that goes like this. It keeps on going forever up and down, right? But what did we learn last year? This is not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test, right? So what do we do to make it a function? Yeah, you restrict the range. Now, there's a standard way of doing it. And so in mathematics, mathematicians said, we're going to restrict this graph to be between 0 and pi, the range. Okay? So if I re erase everything except what's between 0 and pi, is that a function of? Yeah, it passes the vertical like this now. And what's the, what, is, what is the equation of this graph? Well, if you switch the x's and y's, you get x equal cosine y, right? But yeah. now we need to solve for y. How do you solve for y? Inverse of cosine. Divide both sides by COS. Yeah. No! Oh. You gotta make up some, some, you can't do it algebraically. So somebody said, well, since this is gonna be the inverse of the cosine function, why don't we call it cosine inverse x? And that does not mean 1 over cosine x. Cosine. I keep telling you guys, when you use it in function notation, this means inverse. That means you switch the x's and y's. This does not mean cosine x to the negative 1, which would make it secant. Right? And you can clearly see that's not the graph of y equals secant x. This is the inverse of the cosine graph with the restricted range. And you guys know from last year, what's another way of writing cosine inverse x? Arc, arc, arc cosine, cosine, cosine x. x. Why would it be arc sine? We're doing inverse cosine. Now, both of these are interchangeable. They mean exactly the same thing. They mean the inverse of the cosine function with the restricted range. I use both of them interchangeably, whatever I feel like. And next year's book, calculus book, they've used both. You've got to know both. They just mean the inverse of the, tri of the, of the cosine function. So as you know from last year, the key to doing inverse trig functions is you've got to remember the restricted range, right? You guys don't remember anything of this. If you don't know the restricted range, you're pretty much, you're, 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 you're done for already in this chapter. Now luckily for you, there's only two restricted ranges. The first one is between 0 and pi, and the other one is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, which of the which three lie in this one, zero to pi? Well, obviously cosine inverse x because you just CP and inverse and cotangent. Oh, I'm impressed. How do you know? You're looking at the notes. No, I guess. Nah, it's because the. Okay, stop listening. Right okay, and the other three will be over here. Y equals sine inverse. Y equals cosine secant inverse. Cosine is there already. Yeah, that's what. And Y equals tan <laughs> inverse. This is the key to the whole chapter, people. If you don't know this, you're doomed. Okay, now, so this is how you actually graph the, your inverse trig functions. Okay, now, how do you graph them quickly, though? Because these graphs have to be at the tip of your fingers, like. If I tell you graph y equal x squared, you can do that quickly, right? Or y equal x cubed. 
y equal e to the x, y equal natural log x. It should be all Garen Barbarians already, right? And your six trig functions should be Garen Barbarians. Now the six inverse trig functions should be like automatic already. Right? So this is the way I do it. You can pick it up or uh, you can do whatever you want. Just memorize like you did last year. How do you graph sine inverse? This is what I do. The first thing I do, I remember the range. The restricted range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. How do I know that? Because you dumb. memorize it. Well, dumb, right there. Okay. And then what I do in my head now, in my head, I think of the graph of sines. Doesn't sine look like this? Of course, it goes forever in both directions. What are the coordinates of that point right there? Zero, zero. zero, zero. So if I switch them, zero, zero. you still get zero, zero. What about this point? Zero, one. No, pi over two, one. Yep. So if you switch it, you get one pi over two. Therefore, you know the graph better look like that. I just think of key points on the original graph, and then I switch them. Because that's how you get the inverse, right? By switching the axis and y. Yeah, well, Mr. Park, what if I don't even know the original graph? Then you're done, you're done for it. Then just memorize six more. Why do you want to memorize? Because that's all I have. Okay, what about y equal 10 inverse x? <laughs> okay, first thing I do, I remember the restricted range. It goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Anyway, if you look on the second page of your notes, all the graphs are there. No, no, they're right there. All six, I drew all six for you. Okay, now, what does the graph of tangent look like, the regular tangent graph? Don't you have vertical asymptotes at x equal negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 and the thing goes upward like that? Yeah, so just switch the x's and y's. So instead of x equal negative pi over 2, you get y equal negative pi over 2. So, your vert, so vertical asymptotes, when you inverse it, becomes horizontal asymptotes. And now what's this point? 0, 0, switch them. What about that point right there? Pi over 4, comma 1, so switch up. 1 pi over 4. So you know the graph is going to go upward like this. You, know? you just do the inverse of the tan function. It's, it's so easy. You know, but not if you don't know. OK, what about cotan inverse? What's the restricted range for cotan inverse? It's right up here. Zero. 0 to pi. And then now, think of the regular cotangent graph. Doesn't it look like this? Here's pi. Slide down. So all you got to do is switch all the x's and y's on there. And so instead of x equals 0 and x equals pi, you get y equals 0 and y equals pi. And what do you think? Does it go upward or does it come down? Down. down. It comes down. Switching the x's and y's. There you go. So your homework tonight is I'm going to give you an inverse trig graph and then you got to do stuff to it, like stretch it, shrink it, shift it left, right, up, down, reflect it. And so you can bet you're going to see this one again, right? How many times am I going to give you this before you finally get Sunrise. it? Sunrise. Sunrise. So what does that mean? Shift and then translate. I mean, reflect. And then reflect. Yeah, you shift it one to the left, and then you reflect it over the y-axis. And you can bet it's going to be on the next quiz as well, which will be? Tuesday. Yeah, probably Thursday. Okay, now what about secant inverse? Now, when you graph secant inverse, okay, think about how did we graph secant when we first learned it? First you graph the cosine graph, yeah, and then you hop up and down, right? So that's one period. Wherever it touches the x-axis, you get vertical asymptotes, and then if it's humping down, you hump up, and then you hump down, and then you hump up, right? Yep. So what do you think we're going to do on the inverse? Humping. You hump left and you hump right now. Because you're just switching to x's and y's. So instead of humping up and down, you hump left and right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was Kojima, by the way. <laughs> For the administration that's watching. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> This is how they can observe without actually being here. <laughs> what? Whoa! What? She wants. She wants to know what help help means. What? 
hump down. Like, you drunk? Oh, the secret, the secret so rap is hump up, hump down, hump up, hump down, hump up, hump down. My hump, my hump. <laughs> okay, so here, wherever the grab touches the y axis, now you can have a horizontal asymptote, right? Because everything is switched. And it, no, this graph is humping left, so you hump right. And it's humping right, you hump left. Oh, what? It's, when you have the regular seeking graph, you hump up and down, but on the seeking inverse, you hump right, hump left. Hump right, hump left. What about the middle point? What? You can't hump <laughs> on that point. <laughs> look right here, look. How about, well, here's the cosine graph. Hump up, hump down, hump up. You don't hump in between there. <laughs> so why are you going to hump in between there? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you guys learned this last year. <laughs> okay, what about, okay, now what about cosecant inverse? So you take the sine inverse graph, and then you hump left and right. So wherever the thing touches the y-axis, there's going to be a horizontal asymptote. And since the graph is humping left, you hump right. And since it's humping to the right, now you hump left. Boom, finished. OK, so this is how I remember the graphs. You guys are going to rely on memorization, like flashcards for the six graphs. That's dumb. You guys got to know these graphs till you finish. These are all base graphs, people. You got to know these graphs till you finish your math career. Until the very last math course you take, wherever it is. You got to know all of these things. How was you go? No, when you go to college, most of you probably going to take more math. You got to forget this stuff. <laughs> okay, now. I'm telling you right now, the key to all of this is you got to remember the range, okay? So this is how we remember it on the math team, okay? If you have an odd number of C's, see, there's only one C there, one C there, one C there, right? That's an odd number. You know the range is going to be 0 to pi because the 0 looks like an O, which stands for odd. Odd number of C's. If you have an even number of C's, like here, there's one, there's no C's, there's two, and there's none, right? Zero and two are even numbers. See? No, two are even numbers. <laughs> well, what did you guys do last year? Just memorize it. And that's why you, and that's why you cannot remember now, because you just memorized it for the quiz, right? The other class already told me they did. Oh yeah, Mario is sitting right there, she said, Oh yeah. I know. Sarah's too advanced. She probably like read the whole book. <laughs> We won't cover this. Well, how, no, there were some other people too. How can one period yeah. say we learned it and the other period say we didn't? Yeah. Well, well, I I it. well, I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter because I'm teaching it to you now. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so your homework tonight is number one and two. All you got to do is draw nine graphs and check them on your calculator. Now, you got to be careful because on your calculator, there's only cosine inverse, sine inverse, and tan inverse. Right? One over one. Sine inverse. Uh oh. No. Okay. Let, okay. Let me. Okay. No. 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 How? How would they graph this on your calculator? That's a good question. Uh, one over sine inverse. One over. No. Alpha C alpha S alpha C. <laughs> <laughs> no. You can't. This, this calculator is not going to understand that. What? No. If anybody does one over sine inverse, so that's zero for the rest of the year. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling you, this negative one means the inverse, not the reciprocal. But the, yeah, no. Look, I keep telling you. Look, when you see x to the negative one, does that mean one over x? Yes. Yes. But when you use it with functions, does that mean one over f of x? No, that means the inverse of the function. That's not the same as the reciprocal. Reciprocal means you flip over all the y coordinates. You reciprocalize it. Inverse means you switch the x's and y's. That's two different things. No! 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 One over sine inverse. Okay, try it. Try it on your calculator now. No, no, what I'm saying is... If you want to graph one, what? Like you put the inverse on. 
But then your calculator is going to read that as to the negative one power. I mean, you just flip it over. Oh. Yeah, clear it, Matt. Oh, you win? Yeah, Matt has it. Oh. One over X. What? Oh, your whole thing, see your whole thing. Okay, that's correct. Yeah. Wow. How, how does he how does he know that? Uh, look at the bottom of the notes on the bottom. Oh. Bottom of the notes. Oh, yeah. the first page. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> On the bottom right. On the bottom right, Matsubara. It says right there, arc secant x equals arc sine 1 over x. Oh, how does that work? Somehow. Maybe it will become clear. Okay, so tomorrow, tonight, just concentrate on the graphs, okay? Tomorrow, then we're going to learn the meat of the thing. Tomorrow is the meat. Okay, let me pass back the test. Oh. The average was 88, which is pretty good. But that certainly doesn't mean everybody got 88. <laughs>